Dan here, Hardwood Hollows Beyond Bushcraft Skills channel, and today we're going to go over uh, some sharpening and maintenance to an old, we're going to try and recondition an old uh, bow saw blade. This one is a 30 inch bow saw blade. I have it screwed down to the table here so that it uh, can't move anywhere. So I fit a screw into that hole and I actually push it to the outside of the hole so this blade is actually under a little bit of tension. Let's back out and we'll see so you can see what we're going to do here. Alright, first thing we're going to do is this blade, let me pop this off real quick. This blade is really thick with rust. Let's see if we can get close up on it. So you can see just how just how rusty it is. Let's see there's quite a bit of rust. And you can see the silver where I scrape scrape down but I finally got down to the silver there. So yeah it's uh, it's got some pretty thick rust on it. So we're gonna go ahead and get that taken care of and then see if we can't sharpen this thing up using the Dremel tool and I'll go over that in a little bit. Then we're gonna see if we can't get this thing sharpened up uh, using the Dremel tool. First thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna dry sand it. What I'm using is a foam sanding block here and we're just going to try and knock the worst of the rust off. Now what I'm trying to do with the sanding block is stay off the tips of the teeth because they are still somewhat sharp, so I don't want to dull the, the tips. Actually, this blade's a little bit loose, so let's see if I can't tighten it up just a little bit here. better. So what I'm going to try and do is just keep the block behind the cross cut portion of the teeth. Plus those teeth are going to tear up this uh, sanding block pretty bad. And I'm going to do this side and then we're going to flip it over and do the other side and we're just trying to get the worst of it off with this rather coarse, uh, it's a 60 to 100 grit, about 60 grit on one side, 100 on the other. Just use the 60 grit side, I was using the 100 grit side, 60 grit side ought to take this stuff off faster. on this rag here and we'll wipe it down and see what it looks like. Alright, we've got a good, it's still a little rough, but you see the, the thing with very hard metal like this is it does not uh, uh, rust through as badly as a softer metal will. The softer metal will really rust rust down uh, fast and get real deep hard pit, real deep pits in it that are hard to clean out. Uh, because this steel is so hard, because it's a high alloy for the saw, uh, it's similar to knife steel. Uh, a hard knife steel with a high carbon content and especially a high chrome content will not rust nearly as fast as um, as softer, just regular old uh, low carbon like uh, construction steel would. 
All right, I'm trying to take it down till I don't feel the really high stuff. The center part seems to be the worst. I'm getting quite a bit of, of high. Let's see which side we're on here. It's near the center part here seems to be the worst. Oh, we'll see if we can't. Oh, yeah, that's getting better. I don't want to take too much off. By comparison to the new blade that I have, I, bought, I got the saw used. And by comparison to the new blade, this is considerably thicker. Once I get some of this rust off, we'll do a measurement in thousands and we'll see. All right, that blade's looking good now compared to what it was. Let me bring you in here. All right, I got her down, but I had a couple of uh, uh, stubborn spots. So I had this uh, laying on my workbench, the sanding disc. I did not put it on the sander, I just used it by hand. This I think is actually 80 grit, so it's a little bit coarser. Just got in, hit those trouble spots. Now we're switching over to the, the 320 paper. I think it's just about worn out, but I can still hear it cutting a little bit, so we'll keep using it until it doesn't cut anymore, and then I'll put a new piece on. But Yeah, there's the end of it, turnt pulling up and catching on the teeth. Since I got up a little too high. All right, let's see what she looks like. Oh yeah, that's what we're looking for right there. Down to bare metal, pretty much. Avoided as much as I could up on the teeth. And uh, now she looks really nice. Now she looks real nice. Look at that. Nice and shiny. Yeah, we're not perfect, but we're as good as we need to be for our application. It's nice and smooth. That's the important part. You want it smooth so that when you're cutting through the tree, you're not getting any drag. All right, I'm going to flip it over off camera. I'm going to take care of the other side, and then we'll uh, get into the sharpening aspect. All right, I flipped it over. I've got the other side cleaned off. Now I'm going to change techniques, and I'm going to do a wet sand, but this time I'm going to be using the sanding block. And what this is, this is a... a piece of wood that I've squared on the other side and I've then taken this emery cloth and uh, I've applied a, 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 I've stapled it on the sides of the board you can see the staples there holding it onto the board so it's fairly taut and I'm going to take this and I'm going to set it on here now in this case because it is square I'm not too worried about it touching the edges of the blade we're going to touch those up and we go back over it with the uh, uh, with the Dremel tool that we're going to use to sharpen it. And what we're going to use on the Dremel tool to sharpen are actually these little cutting discs. And you got to be very, very careful. You got to wear your safety gear because these things can blow up. This particular disc is super thin, but it does not have any uh, of the fiberglass inside of it for strength. So this time I'm going to. Uh, wet sand it, so I'm going to apply a little bit of WD-40 to my sanding block here. Spread that out so it's evenly coating the block. Now I'm going to take this block and I'm just going to evenly push it back and forth across this blade, as you see, and that'll take it down even deeper. And then when I get that done, before I flip it over, I have one that's even finer yet. Uh, this one is a 120. This one I think is three, 320. So let's get to it. Now what the WD-40 does, it does two things. One, it lubricates, but it also helps to um, uh, wash away some of the uh, 
uh, rust and metal debris as we go along. And you'll see that in a minute. Alright, now you can see we're getting down to some shinier metal here in some spots. Get her to focus here. Like there's one spot right there that's taken down to the bare metal. So I'm going to start in on it again with the coarser one. Try and get her a little bit further down. Again, we're going to lubricate it. But uh, now I'm going to try and stay off the curve of the blade because if you see some of these teeth, you can actually see where the teeth are showing a shine. Uh, right here, you can see uh, the tips of some of these teeth are showing, showing uh, signs where I'm going across them. Now that's actually sharpening that edge, but it's sharpening it from the wrong side. So now I'm going to stay back behind the edge of the teeth like this and uh, move it back and forth this way and see if we can't get a lot more of that rust off. Alright, here we go. I'm going to keep at it and I'll come back to you in a minute. This can be pretty boring just watching me sand metal, so I'll come back to you in just a second. All right, let me bring you in here and you can see it looks pretty nice. There's the line right there that uh, I scraped in it with the screwdriver, and I can't feel that line now. It's pretty much flush. So we'll get her flipped over and we'll try the other side. All right, so we got both sides. Shined up and sanded down and shined up as much as I want to get to them. Guess I can't. I guess I can count on never using this board for any project. I got to paint because it's now saturated on that side with WD-40. Hell, I don't throw anything away. Years ago, I built an old bed frame for a. Uh, queen size bed when my wife and I bought our first queen size upgrading from a double and the mattress didn't come with a regular bed frame and the double we had wouldn't fit the queen so I went out looking at different bed frames and they was all so doggone expensive that I just went out to the garage and looked at all the lumber that I had and figured well I got enough to build a frame so Put some 2x6s and some 4x4s four and some 2x4s to, to work and before I knew it, I had me a bed frame. So that's what all the screw holes are, are that are in this board is from when it was a bed frame of all things. Alright, 
Well, that is kind of dirty business doing that kind of work there. So now what we're going to do is I have these vice blocks here set between a pair of 2 by 4s and we're going to put these up in the vise over here and that will allow us to support this, uh, this saw blade. So let me go ahead and reset the camera and we'll come back to you. So let me go ahead and reset the camera and we'll come back to you. Okay, these teeth um, are sharpened on both sides. So this tooth is sharpened on this side and on this side this tooth is sharpened on this side and this side. And the reason for that is that this blade is designed to cut both directions. Now this tooth, if you see this tooth right here, or this tooth right here, like this, that's what's called your rakers. Your rakers are not sharpened. Your rakers are there so that when these four teeth cut material out, the raker is there for the simple fact of scraping the, the chips out of the cut and making sure that it no longer, that, that they're not in the way and they don't plug up the blade. So as I mentioned, we're going to be using the Dremel tool. These are the blades that I'm using. They're the Dremel Heavy Duty Cutoff Wheels. And they come in a pack of 20 pieces. Now like I said, these do not have the uh, uh, fiberglass strengthener in them. So uh, the fibers like the, like the heavy wheel cutoff wheels do. So we will be wearing our, our earmuffs and our safety glasses. I'm also going to be putting gloves on because, like I said, these are still sharp. Uh, once I get going, I'm not going to be able to talk because the Dremel tool is going to be too loud. So you'll just uh, have to watch and hope you can see what I'm doing here, okay? All right, got all my PPE on. So here's how I have the cutoff wheel set up on my Dremel tool. I have the uh, flexible extension installed and I'm going to put it up to full blast. Alright, so you can see what I'm doing. I'm coming in to the side where what I call what is called the kerf is, whatever the sharpened edge is, and I'm just coming into that edge, hitting like this, and just dragging the cutoff wheel to the top with very light strokes, and I'm trying to maintain the existing angle just to sharpen that edge up. And I'm trying not to get down and start cutting down inside these curves like this. I don't want to be cutting down in there because that will weaken the blade. So I'm just coming down until I touch the very bottom of the blade itself, the flat, and then dragging it up like this. And then I did a few on this side also. So I was starting here, dragging up, and then going to every other tooth and dragging up because every other tooth is the opposite. Once I get completely done, I'll flip the blade around 
and then start from that edge. And as I go, I'm going to move it down inside my board so that I can get all the way down and have the blades nice and stiff. So I'll do a few more. We'll back out here. I'll do a few more and then we'll go from and then I'll go ahead and finish off camera. See if I can get, let me take my gloves off and stuff here. See if I can get you in close enough so you can see the shine on the edge of these things, of these teeth. So, oh, I'm running out of cord here. Let me get my light out and see if I can't illuminate those. All right, so you can see that tooth, those teeth right there, as I've sharpened them, as opposed to out here, the ones that have not been sharpened. And then we come back up here, and you can see where I've grabbed. Oh, looks like I missed. This one right here. No, I got it lightly. Here we go. Thought I'd missed one. So I'm just trying to get this cutting edge to be sharper. And then, like I said, once I get all done, I'll flip it around and we'll do the opposite side. And like I said, your goal is to maintain the existing angle. So looking at that one, I didn't make the angle sharp enough. So I'll touch that one up and then we'll move along. So I'll finish off camera. And once I get done, we'll come back to you and we'll show you the finished product. And we'll do a comparison between it and the new blade, which is on the saw right here. And that blade is, uh, like I said, it's a 30-inch blade. That one's brand new. It's got a little tiny bit different. Uh, I think a shorter tooth pattern and the, but the blade is definitely thinner than this one all right we'll come back to you in a minute uh, once I get her done well probably more in a minute and then we'll uh, finish up the video all right you know how I said you had to be careful with these things because they can blow up and that's why you always want to wear your PPE well there you go come on That son of a gun right there just snapped right off. There was a cutting disc on there. Now it's gone. So we'll grab our discs, put on a new one. Okay, well, you can see, if the camera will show it, you can see the shine on those teeth right there where it's been sharpened. And you'll note that each tooth that gets sharpened is going to get sharpened on, say, this tooth right here. Both edges, 
the right and left edge gets sharpened on the same side. The next tooth, the right and left edge gets sharpened on the opposite side, so on and so forth. And again, we don't touch the rakers. Uh, they're not angle sharpened, they're just there to rake the, the uh, scrapings out, or the chips out. Unfortunately, when I got it done, I discovered that right here at the inner hole, there's a crack. So this blade technically is going to be unserviceable. I'm, I'm going to attempt to put it on and see if it will stand up to, uh, uh, to, to some test cutting to see if my uh, sharpening did good. Uh, the other thing I forgot to mention is when you're sharpening to the tip, you have to be very careful not to spend any extra time on the tip because if you spend too much time on the tip of the tooth, what's going to happen is it'll burn it. So if you see any color discoloration, you have to regrind it until that discoloration is gone. So let me go ahead and get it installed on my saw and we'll see if it'll if that uh, hole will be able to take any torque um, because the blade is held in through tension. So we'll give that a try. If it'll, if it'll lock in, we'll give it a try. They give you two holes. Unfortunately, it's my inner hole that's the problem. So I can, I can, I'm going to be hooking to the outer hole, which is what's needed for my saw. But unfortunately, it's probably going to put too much tor uh, torque on there and possibly crack it more. But we'll give it a try and see. Okay, told you we were going to take some measurements here. So we're going to take my... Uh, calipers here and this is the measurement on the old tooth actually we'll, go to the, we'll measure a raker since that's one we haven't ground on at all and that blade is 750 thousandths tall and we'll compare, compare that to the new blade which is only 710 thousandths tall and now we'll do a thickness measurement side-by-side -side thickness measurement after de-rusting it we're 30 thousandths thick on the old blade The new blade is only 25 thousandths thick. So the old blade was thicker and taller. And in the side by side comparison, you can see the height difference between this blade and this blade. If I lay one on top of the other, you can see right here how this raker is taller, as is this raker. The teeth are about equal, but the rakers are taller. Now the the old te uh, the new teeth are a little bit shorter. But like I said, I've I've already ground on the old teeth, so they're not going to be as tall as they were. Now, if you get to the point where you've ground too much off of these, you may have to uh, of the teeth you may have to take your rakers down, which is the same thing you have to do on a on a chainsaw. So. Let's try and see if we can get this old one to latch in uh, without cracking. 